or how each pixel is contributing to the final output. So for that, these guys come up with their own novel method called integrated gradients. So the formal definition of attribution, yeah, you can see that here. So for if there are, it's an n-dimensional input, each dimension has an attribution and they use a reference or a baseline called x bar so the reason they use this is uh, it it gives a counterfactual dimension to the problem so humans are created counterfactual intuition so they can say that if they if this didn't happen then my output would have been like so and that's why they use a baseline here and there are different, so before I get into the crux of the paper, I'll just introduce some different attribution methods. So the most like obvious one would be to just take that, take a particular dimension and just replace it with a zero vector, zero value or whatever you want, a baseline and find the difference in outputs. So that will be the attribution for that dimension. Uh, then you could also try gradient methods. So here you can expand f of x as a, in terms of Taylor series. So here they, I've done only first order because generally what happens in neural networks is you have all these redo activations and the higher order terms get canceled out. So the first order expansion is like so, and these, these are the first order terms. So how, what they do is, uh, you just compute the gradient with respect to the input and multiply it with the difference between that input and the baseline. So that gives you, uh, attribution. And you could also do stuff like, uh, guided bar procreation. So, uh, this, they like, they tweak with the backdrop process. So what happens here is let's say in forward pass, we take, uh, only pause, only positive uh, values and filter it out with relu. So in the similar way, these guys take the negative attributions and they filter them out. So the negative, at, let's say the incoming gradient to a relu, relu layer has some negative values, those negative values become zero. Okay. So the paper defines certain axioms or certain desirable properties of attributions. So this is like, this is necessary because we need a way to evaluate these uh, attributions so that we know how good or bad they are. So the first one is uh, sensitivity. So what sensitivity does is uh, it checks that you take a baseline and you change any one value in that baseline and that becomes your input. So if you have a baseline vector like so and an input vector where you change only one value and if you do this and the output changes. So if the input vector has a different output and the baseline vector has a different output this one must receive some attribution because the output is sensitive to this change. But the problem with stuff like gradient based attributions is, uh, just take this example of this function. So at X equal to zero, the value is one and at X equal to two, the value is zero. So the output is changing from X equal to zero to X equal to two. But if I find the gradient at two, it, it, it is zero and it gives it zero attribution, even though the output is sensitive to X equal to two. So in this way, uh, just using gradients as attributions are harmful. And the second one is implementation invariance. So like, because neural networks are so big and they have multiple degrees of freedom, it's very likely that two very different implementations give the same output for equal inputs. 
so if this is the case then it makes sense that whatever attribution method you're using it should give the same attribution to in both these cases so there are certain methods like uh, lrp is layer wise relevance propagation like i even i'm not sure how exactly it works but what it does is it uh, estimates the gradients in terms of it, it estimates the gradients layer uh, without the calculus part so it just takes it as uh, difference the ratio of differences so if if you if your model if your attribution method has to be implementation variance then it has to just rely on the pure uh, chain rule because if chain rule is satisfied then that means it is implementation variance so if you have two networks and they, even though they are different the partial derivative of the output with respect to input will be the same because you are using chain rule but here methods like lrp they violate chain rule they don't follow chain rule while uh, computing attributions so you can see this example uh, this is from the paper itself so they take this is one function and this is the other one so these two are actually equivalent like there are some minor differences you can see here in this layer they are subtracting one here and they are subtracting one in the last layer here but these two are essentially equivalent functions so it makes sense that both the inputs must get equal attributions but if you look only integrated gradients give these gives these equal attributions and the other two methods don't and there is like this is like one of the most important properties completeness so this says that when i if i sum over the attributions for all the inputs that must be equal to the difference between the output at uh, the original input and the baseline so this is important because you can clearly make out that the attribution is part of something bigger like you can say that okay my attribution compute like my attribution is this much relative to the total that is f of x minus f of x bar okay so what integrated gradients does is it actually takes inspiration from economics so there they measure the cost of a project as a function of the demands of various participants so they use a path uh, integrated gradient there so what this does is uh, if you, you let's say you have an n dimensional input and that is characterized by gamma of alpha so alpha equal to 0 means gamma of 0 means it is the baseline and gamma of 1 means it's the actual input so you can have variety of inputs from varying from 0 to 1 so gamma of 0 to gamma of 1 and they just take a in in this paper they take a straight line path from the input to the baseline from the baseline to the input and they integrate it okay so now just a minute i'll present the paper itself can you guys see the paper yeah yeah okay if you look at the applications of this let's say question classification so here uh, you need to classify what type of question it is and let's say let's take this example here so it says uh, which year did she work on the most films and it's a date time question and we can see that <clears throat> the most attribution is going to year so it makes sense that it should go to year because it's a date time question and uh in machine translation we generally if you have an attention model then you look at the align the attention weights and check how every output how every token in the output sequence is aligning with all of the inputs 
So you can do something similar with attributions also. So you can get to know like uh, for each translation, uh, which of the words are more important in the input sentence. And there is also another important property called uh, symmetry preserving. Okay, and an axiom, sorry. Yeah, just a minute. So what symmetry preserving does is, uh, it takes uh, two inputs. If the if f of x y is equal to f of if x if f of x comma y and f of y comma x are equal for all x comma y, then it means that the x and y are uh, symmetric to each other. So they're playing the same role essentially. And it makes sense for the attribution to be same for x and y. And here is a proof that says that this happens only if you take a straight line path from the input to the baseline. Uh, I don't completely understand it. So let's not discuss that now. Uh, and here, yeah. I was talking about uh, guided backpropagation. So that also doesn't satisfy sensitivity. So if you look at the paper here, they gave an example. So let's uh, go to this function here. So here, let's take uh, Z2 between zero and X1 to minus one. Okay. And X1 has always greater than one you fix x1 at greater than one so if you keep uh, increasing z2 f of x keeps changing but then the attribution to x2 will, it will still be zero that doesn't make sense so why is it zero because if you look at the gradient with respect to if you look at df do f by do z2 uh, in this case, it will be Z1 minus 1 minus Z2 into minus 1 because of minus Z2. And in guided backprop, as I told, if the gradient is negative, it uh, takes it as 0. So if I have a negative gradient here, it passes as 0. So if you take do, do F by do X2, it will be 0 in case of guided backprop. So that's why it doesn't work over there. But then integrated gradient satisfies these properties. So their main, their main thing is they took inspiration from economics and the proof for why these path methods satisfy all these axioms is given in this paper. But yeah, I haven't gone through that. It's pretty complicated. So yeah, that's it, I guess. Any doubts Any questions?